Yeah. All right, so welcome everyone. Welcome to um, Moodle Moot, that's the name, uh, virtual conference for 2021. This is our 10th anniversary, so it's really, really exciting. But it's amazing how time flies. Uh, it's hard to believe that uh, 10 years have gone by. This is the first session of uh, today, and I'd like to introduce our presenter. Our presenter is coming to us from India, and that's Dr. Anitha Devi V. She is Associate Professor, Department of English, SSL, VIT, and she has successfully developed the English Language Laboratories and a two-credit lab course in the MTech program at VIT Valor. She's handled sessions in various programs on the use of technology. She is very skilled at using technology, both fully online and in blended learning formats in the language classroom. She has done her research in computer assisted language learning or short call uh, from Anna University she has organized and participated in international conferences. She has guided research scholars and writing and has written articles on Web 2.0, culture, literature, and call for journals are her recent um, work. She is an associate member and faculty coordinator. Is this the right, am I reading the right one, the, um, the correct one, uh, Revithi? I Yeah. I don't okay. Think. <laughs> it seems to be the same, but anyway, she's an associate member and faculty coordinator. You'll have to correct if there's anything here that's changed. Yes. Of I E E E P C S V I T and uh, students chapter and I E E E. You'll have to tell us about the acronyms. Yeah, and Institute she's of Electrical Electronics Engineering. Right. In so you actually teach English. Uh, to um, students who are taking their degrees in engineering and other technical subjects. Am I correct? Uh, only English and it's uh, for, the uh, for the technical students, for the BTEC undergraduate and postgraduate uh, post and PhD students. students. All right, if I left anything out, feel free to, uh, yeah. to That's add fine. it. That's fine. <laughs> All right, so it, it gives me great pleasure uh, to introduce the speaker and we're going to get started. Thank you for joining us. Feel free to use the, um, let me get everybody in here, to use the chat box to uh, communicate and add questions for later. All right, so I'll put myself in the background. Uh, Thank you. Nelly, there are some people waiting in the room. Should we admit them? I have admitted everybody. Yeah, there are a couple of people it did show for me. Yes, but now they're, they shouldn't yeah. be showing. Yeah. And I disabled it. I should have disabled it before. Sorry about sure. that. I usually do it mm. before. No okay. problem. That's fine. Thank you, Nelly, for that uh, uh, wonderful introduction and uh, it's been 10 years since we moved on. The first time I met Nelly was in uh, the Wiki Educator workshop and from then on, from 2009, we've been in touch and she's been a mentor and it's been a great learning uh, experience with all her sessions and connecting online and Moodle Moot. Now I'll switch off my camera and I'll continue with my presentation. I hope I'm audible and clear to everybody. Yes, you are. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I started off with this uh, topic uh, because it interested me in uh, exploring how multimodal activities can be used in uh, the classroom. And as we moved on uh, with time and the pandemic, we've become uh, online completely. So during the class uh, sessions where we had face-to-face -face sessions, it was uh, more of a blended uh, mode and uh, mostly it was with the students who were having their mobile phones and 
they were quite engaged with the mobile phone. So most of the activities were shared with them on the WhatsApp group or if they were on Facebook and they were comfortable, it was mostly through that. Now with uh, the online mode, we started teaching on uh, with MS Teams and we do have a Moodle uh, LMS that supports us at VIT. I teach in Velu Institute of Technology, which is located in uh, Velu, Tamil Nadu in India. And uh, these are, uh, you know, most of the activities that I'm going to talk about is what I have explored in the classroom and, and what I have been exploring with my research, uh, research scholars and what I might do in the coming semester as well. So looking at uh, multimodality, I was looking at uh, various definitions of it. So a quick reference from Oxford, this is what I found. The use of more than one semiotic mode in meaning making, communication and representation generally or in a specific situ situation. Such modes include all forms of verbal, nonverbal and contextual communication. Multimodal literacy refers to awareness and effective use of this range of modalities. So usually in real life, we are uh, more, uh, you know, of a person with uh, multiple ways of looking at meaning. We, uh, we speak through visuals, we speak uh, a lot of information through our gestures, tone, and we make a lot of meaning. Similarly, so when we have such activities on the digital uh, plat uh, platform, it makes a lot of sense to our students. And uh, it also refers to uh, interplay between different representation modes, for instance, between images and uh, the text or the spoken word that is uh, written or the spoken word. Uh, it also means having or using a variety of modes or methods to do uh, something. For example, we may use newspapers. Newspapers are in the print form in paper uh, or in the digital uh, form as well. Yes. Uh, we have uh, simulated newspapers these days. We have advertisements, both in print as well as digital, audio, videos, PowerPoint. PowerPoint, uh, it's not just with the Microsoft PowerPoint. We have different uh, presentation tools like with Flash or Prezi. And we can uh, explore most of these uh, while we are in the classroom. If we want to use poetry or essays or short stories and different ways we can use different modes. And this is what I have uh, come across from Gunther Kress and Theo Van Leeuwen uh, from the book that they have written uh, related to multimodality. And uh, this is how I started off uh, working on this presentation, looking at my classroom context and what I was exploring in the classroom, what I, can, what I could do with the learning management system, Moodle or the uh, teaching platform uh, teams. So multimodality offered a rich teaching learning context for me. And uh, it also allowed me as a teacher and my students uh, in creating multimodal materials uh, in a multimodal uh, environment. Now, when I looked at it, uh, the novelty inspired the students to explore better. Uh, and instead of having just a lecture online, it allowed them to explore and uh, within the one and a half hours or 50 minutes, they could explore uh, different um, websites or uh, all the uh, sites which I told them on the chat. So they could explore different worlds, virtual worlds or 3D worlds. And of course they have augmented reality. Now, this is a little tricky. If we have the tools, it is better. There are certain tools which we need to use augmented reality. Suppose we need uh, to explore uh, poems or songs, maybe we can use karaoke and we can have images, graphics, and um, for short stories, we can make them uh, work on comics or cartoon, ask them to create cartoons. They can also create game apps. So this was the whole idea, but what I did, I'll just show a bit of it. Not much of all this uh, has been uh, explored. I'm also working on it. So when I uh, started exploring all these, I also found that there's a lot of correlation between multiple intelligence and we are facilitating the learners multiple intelligences through multimodal learning. That is visual spatial intelligence 
linguistic, uh, verbal intelligence, naturalistic intelligence, musical intelligence, visual intelligence, and interpersonal and intrapersonal uh, intelligence. This has been taken from Smith 2002, and I've added all the references at the end. So um, and now we may wonder how do we do it with kinesthetic. Now we are not in the face-to-face -face classroom. We are not meeting physically, but of course we can give them instruction. There are certain uh, games and uh, certain video games uh, where they can do certain uh, activities where we can explore kinesthetics. It's, it's a little too tricky for us to think on those lines when we are completely on the uh, digital plane. And uh, so what happens here is uh, when I was exploring some literature on it, I did find that uh, the, uh, the smart act of any individual uh, gets exposed when we allow them to act in a multimodal way. So their multiple intelligences are uh, different for each learner. So as we know, so they start uh, you know, acting accordingly when we give certain activities. So it's up to us to explore what kind of activities we can share. We can exploit the text to help them um, act multimodally and allow their multiple intelligences to function. So, so it's uh, just being smart. Now, another uh, interesting link that I came across is Prodigy Game. And here uh, you do have for rhyming words, you can create an account and you can also explore and see. So uh, here it's always, uh, uh, the focus is on uh, from being unimodal to bimodal to multimodal from the traditional way of learning. So what happens is when they create models or when they are in a simulative uh, environment, they start interacting. And there is a higher level of, uh, you know, looking at the skills from the basic skills to the higher order thinking skills. So they start creating. Um, I think somebody is drawing on the screen. Uh, I request you to avoid that. Now, yes, I, I also heard it. It's kind of strange because nobody has rights. So I'll try yes. to locate it and get rid of it. Sure, sure. Thank you, Nelly. Um, now, uh, when I was looking at it, I just uh, was trying to see. Now, of course, in classrooms, we do use songs. Uh, popular songs uh, in English, we can give them a close activity. So we can use different types of media and uh, we can instruct them and educate our learners. And we can also learn how we can use these tools. Now that's a simple activity that we can do even in a face-to-face -face classroom. But how do we do it online? Uh, and ask them to, uh, instead of we giving them songs, we can ask every other student to explore and get different songs and the lyrics. And we can ask them to, uh, you know, uh, put it on the chat or give them a Google Doc, which is shared. And they have uh, the access to the Google Doc through their uh, mail and everybody posts their text there. The only problem that might come in is when students uh, who uh, don't know how to use it might erase off others by deleting it. That's something that happens ra rarely, but it can be curtailed and it can be managed and they would uh, really find it useful and they would also be surprised that they could see everybody's uh, you know, uh, suggestion or pictures or songs, uh, the lyrics that are there and in a simple uh, Google Docs that's being shared to their official student mail ID. And this really works wonders because Everybody is inspired to do and they would like to finish. Even if the slowest of slowest learners are there in the class, they would like to explore and do it. This is one thing that I have found. And uh, one activity that I'm planning to do in this semester is e-travel diary of explorers where we have a blog writing or um, a travel journal or a travel blog. So I was looking at this option of uh, using Google Earth. They cannot travel physically, which is uh, practically not possible. So I was thinking of different explorers um, and Google Maps. Maybe I can just uh, Google Earth allows us to use this.
Now this is uh, Google Earth. And if you can see my screen, is my screen visible to all of you? The browser that I have opened, Google yes, Earth. Yes, it is. It's visible. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now in Google Earth, you have the education section here and you have a lot of information here. The moment you, uh, there's a classroom resource as well. And uh, there's a lot of uh, information here. And if you want to locate it by country or the continent, you have a lot of information. And if you just click it, it will allow you to go to the Google Earth page, which I have put on my uh, PowerPoint as well. And if you have, uh, you know, I'm not uh, trying to make it. Yes, it's fine. Now you have a video here and you also have a lot of text that's there. And uh, there are so many, uh, you know, you can explore the satellite maps and you can ask them to, you know, imagine themselves as being an explorer and they can go ahead and they can start writing. You can give them a timeline and they can visit the place virtually and they can browse for some more information and write uh, narrative uh, posts for their blog. And over a period of time, maybe it can be evaluated. This is my uh, plan. So this is what I wanted to show. And now moving on to yeah, my slide. So this will be a e-travel diary and uh, they, they will have to Im imagine, explore and use the Google Earth live satellite images and they can also explore other websites they can explore the encyclopedia that's there and they can write on their own so next one is uh, very closely associated with exploration as people started exploring because of the spice trade and there are lots of stories so that we can ask them to give a reading list within the classroom with breakout rooms they can just uh, put it on the chat after say 15, 20 minutes, we'll have a lot of uh, list of stories and novels, and we can ask them to explore on diaspora literature. They don't need to read the complete story or novel, but if they can, maybe in a couple of classes, we can allow them to do. And one such uh, novel is The Mistress of Spices, which also has a movie, and it's not just in English, it's also available in Hindi. So there's a scholar who's working on that. Uh, uh, you know, giving multimodal exercises in the classroom. And uh, there's a visual dictionary which the students can explore to find out more information on spices. So this is uh, available on Miriam uh, Webster, uh, Webster's uh, dictionary. And this is an interesting activity. And uh, most of my exercises that I did in the last couple of semesters are uh, using text and of course a few video and mostly it was on Moodle. And uh, there, are, there are many environments where we can uh, look at multimodal um, activities that can be given to the students. One is graphic novels, picture books, audio books. We do have a lot of videos, animated uh, CGI, uh, you know, uh, video clips or movies, as well as we have documentaries. Now, uh, one reading activity as a sample that we planned was for the low English proficient students is take short excerpt of a story and ask them to read the complete story. And the same story is available as a YouTube video. Now, this whole activity was designed based on my uh, suggestions uh, to my scholar. So this is how uh, she has written. And probably we'll have to explore how this works with the low English proficient students. Another activity is from um, a remake of uh, say Beauty and the Beast. Uh, and uh, it's a movie uh, where a popular actor is acting there and there's a YouTube of it and students can explore this as well. So uh, these two activities were designed based on my suggestion. And it's quite interesting to see that when we have a text as well as a video of the same and uh, how the students would re respond to it and what they learn. And uh, given the opportunity, the, suppose they have a lot of time or even if they are uh, uh, disinterested, they are putting their microphone off. Sometimes we can allow them to 
be at the breakout room where there's another student who is uh, active, probably who's highly motivated, who would uh, make the other uh, student who's uh, less motivated to you know explore and read the story, tell the story. And after a couple of minutes, I would ask them to even put the words on the chat, ask them what the meanings are, uh, and there would be a, a kind of a discussion between the students. Another activity that I explored in the last semester was using fantasy text-based games. And uh, this is the link that is there, text adventure uh, games. Um, and you have here, it's not just to do with fantasy. In fantasy, there are 800 plus games. There are uh, other games to do with horror. Maybe uh, this uh, link can be, I will share the link on the chat if you want, and uh, probably, yes. And uh, I would also tell you that this game is purely uh, text-based games. And uh, initially they were asked to explore this web link and they were asked to choose any game that they would like to play. Now, um, then most of the students who wanted to uh, play these games, they were really excited. They just put the titles of the games that they explored and saw. They didn't start playing. So these were some of the uh, titles, Horror in the Dark, uh, Darkness, A Dark Room and Lifeline, The Dream Hold, Zork, Spider and the Web. Maybe I will uh, show a couple of uh, games. I will open this link and show it to you. And now the first game that I, uh, we came across here is uh, Portculus. And here it's more of an adventure fantasy based games. Every prompt that the student has to give is based on the storyline that is there. And uh, there is no visual or no image. So what happens automatically is the student has to read and reread the text to give the correct prompts so that he or she can finish the game. Now probably I'll just show the game to you. Yes, I hope my screen is visible. Now here uh, I have the game and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's to do with the uh, evil sorcerer and uh, we have to find our way out. Okay, now I'm just uh, giving a random uh, uh, sentence and you can see how it responds. Um, So it gives me a response, you're not carrying anything. So I'll have to go back, if I'm not giving a correct appropriate response, I have to go back, read the whole text and give an appropriate uh, game. And here it's more to do with directions. And um, uh, you know, you can't uh, come out of the game easily without typing a couple of uh, sentence structures which are correct, grammatically correct. And of course, the meaning has to be obvious, uh, related, obviously related to the game. That's one thing here, and um, maybe you can explore. Maybe I can put the chat on the chat. That's that would be really good, and you can also explore and see. I have put the link there. Now, this uh, these games were quite. Uh, uh, you know, useful for the students and they were quite interested in uh, playing a lot of games and uh, so many titles they had and we had a kind of a discussion uh, based on these games and how they explored the games. There were breakout rooms and they had to also have, they also had to uh, go through a telephonic conversation based on the game. So each person had to play one game and it shouldn't be the same game. So they would exchange ideas about the games and uh, in future they plan to explore the, those games as well. So this is something that uh, interested them. And in between, um, they also had other uh, crossword puzzles on Moodle uh, related to uh, sports and uh, they could uh, explore the meaning use, uh, using the visual dictionary online.com. And, uh, uh, and in between, they also had another activity related to how uh, 
you know, these uh, video games were affecting the kids during the pandemic. So they had to explore a lot of articles. So each student had to explore a different article from any uh, uh, digital newspaper or a magazine and they had to put it on the uh, chat. And they were in breakout rooms and they had to explore what the other person had to say. And uh, after that uh, activity in the class, maybe towards the end, I had this kind of a post on the chat as well as on Moodle and I gave them a day's time. And that I asked them to put the link of the article, ask them what is the name of the newspaper, where, when it is, uh, which year has the article been published, and what are the words that they found in the article they couldn't understand. And I had asked them to list all those articles with the link. And if they found more than one article, they were allowed to do it on Moodle. And they had to list all the words at, with the meanings. And one interesting thing here is UniCheck plagiarism check on uh, Moodle. And so when they did this, um, they were really surprised about what is happening in their uh, article. And later on, they had a essay writing. They were really worried about copying and uh, how they can avoid copying. So that was their concern. I will talk about in that uh, slide. And um, another activity that I gave to one of my uh, students uh, uh, who are at the P history level is to do with oral presentation. And they were asked to present on academic vocabulary, which is um, a kind of a list of words and, with the meanings. And most of them, they tried to explore and they tried to work on it. Uh, maybe I'll show it. Oof, I'm not. My screen visible? Uh, yes, yes. I think it's taking time. To no, 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 we see it. It may be taking yes. time on your end, yeah. but we yeah. see it. Yeah, so this is what they prepared. I had asked them, you can uh, choose the word and the meaning even from the book. It was just a learning, uh, uh, you know, uh, learning activity where they were trying to read it and they were trying to put it and present it in their video. They had to make a PowerPoint presentation and make it as a video. I hope it was also visible. I didn't include my uh, computer audio for the slides. A, where all what we're seeing is a Moodle activity. Okay, okay. I I will just uh, share the screen. If is it visible now? Is it it's, visible? I don't. I only I see. I see English five hundred and four English for researchers. No, 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 no. Yeah, that's yeah. not the right one. That's so you have to go. One. So go where you want us to be. Yeah, I think uh, I'll do it on. You just have to go to the right tab yeah, on your I browser. The tab. I selected the tab. I think I'll use uh, Mozilla itself. Notice everyone, this is a Moodle course. So Anitha's using Moodle LMS. And I think that makes life so much easier uh, to teach yeah. online using Moodle, specifically Moodle. I hope you can see the uh, particular screen now. Is it visible? Uh, nope, not yet. Is it visible? No. Maybe it's just me. Um, what about the others? Can you add in the chat box? No, okay, so it's not just me. No, we um, can't. We're I still seeing you in the move it vit ac yeah in, I'll, at your I'll university just select it now i'll just select it is it visible now now we see met we see, yes yes, yes that's it yeah i love yes, the ice cream you. blue ice yeah. cream yes the ice cream so they had to choose all the words that they learned from the book they had to choose any unit and they had to make a, a presentation and the student has made on uh, metaphors 
and idioms. Of course, there's a typo error there. She's made one. And uh, so she had just taken the examples and I had asked them to add appropriate, uh, you know, images, whatever they can. So that was the whole uh, idea of making, making them learn. So, so they had to make it exactly for three minutes, like a um, presto, present your topic. So that was the challenge. And they had, uh, some of them, this uh, increased the time by six minutes or five minutes. I said, it's fine. So this is something uh, really uh, interesting for them. And uh, most of them tried to complete it. And I'll just go back to my slide. Now is my screen visible? Uh, you can see the course. Yes, there were another two presentations uh, on, I, I, I wouldn't show this, it's almost five. Uh, if there's time, I will show it. Nelly, I, do I have time? Yes, yes, you do. Yeah, you and then I will minutes. show this. Yes, I've got 10 minutes, sir. But you have to make sure, sorry for interrupting, you have to make sure that you have, uh, uh, that you're sharing sound. Yeah, yeah, I'm sharing. Okay. I have no, to I mean on your videos. Okay. Yes, yes, I'll do that. Uh, I hope you are able to see my screen, which has English for researchers. Is it visible? Yes, but we don't, we may not hear anything unless you've shared sound. Yeah, I've shared the sound. I've shared the sound. So give me one minute. The Is the audio fine? Yes, yes, we're hearing something. Yeah. So he is a PhD scholar working in the business school. So there is a, uh, so he's chosen on etiquette. Uh, etiquette where uh, each professionals or any human being should follow. So some of the etiquettes are social etiquettes, bathroom etiquettes, carpet etiquettes, sweating etiquettes, meeting etiquettes, telephone etiquette, uh, aging and uh, business etiquette. So let's see uh, some of the uh, etiquette uh, in the coming slides. There are different factors uh, influencing uh, etiquettes, uh, such as uh, psychological uh, factors. So the psychological factors of uh, impacts uh, children and their uh, childhood. So the etiquettes uh, basically uh, adapted by children based on their heredity and also uh, through the parents. So, uh, so that uh, all the psychologists and all the teachers and in the schools also advise the parents to uh, follow good etiquettes uh, among the children. So these are just a list of words and uh, I had asked them to be creative and use a lot of uh, examples with visuals and uh, uh, even mind maps or even, uh, you know, uh, concept maps, whatever they could explore. So this is, uh, as you know, as a learning aspect, when we integrate so many modes, what happens is automatically we start memorizing and internalizing the words. Uh, in the context, the semiotics works better. So that is one thing that I found when we use these tools and allow them uh, to uh, create such, uh, you know, videos or presentations. But of course, we need to give them a lot of time. We need to be patient with them. That's one thing that I learned with most of these students. Uh, I'll just move on to my slides. I'm not showing the complete video because... Uh, Nelly has already told me I just have 10 minutes. Yes, I'm not showing the other video. Uh, the PowerPoint is available. Most of you can explore these links later at your own time. Now, another activity based on the same fantasy games, I gave them a, a kind of an assessment question where they had to you know, uh, give, uh, make a telephonic conversation, a real telephonic conversation, and they had two games, each person had a game and they had to put their uh, transcript over here along with the audio recording. 
So this is a transcript between two students. Uh, and uh, the two games that they explored are Hunting Unicorn and Hob a Hobbit Trek. So it's quite interesting to see that uh, they really played the game and, uh, and they are uh, quite enthusiastic and it's a realistic conversation. It's not a made up conversation. That's one uh, interesting fact about these kinds of dialogues and uh, the exchanges that they have when they are recording it. Uh, now, based on my earlier slide, when I mention about uh, uni check plagiarism check uh, on Moodle itself, it automatically generates the report and the students get worried about copying from the internet. So as soon as they post, they get the information. Now here they were asked to write an essay on uh, different types of spices and herbs and about spice trade. I did give information and a lot of information from the encyclopedia, I shared it with them. And I just asked them to categorize the essay based on uh, the uh, you know, topics that I've mentioned here and give interesting facts, mainly how did the spice trade happen? I wanted to listen to their version of the story. So initially I had asked them to brainstorm their ideas and I asked them to you know, create mind maps or any kind of diagrammatic information for uh, you know, putting their ideas on paper. So this is how they came out for turmeric and uh, you know, uh, for uh, cinnamon. Uh, it, it's, it's their own way of uh, putting the ideas there. And then uh, they started putting the essay there on the uh, Moodle. Now, uh, another writing activity which I have been uh, planning to explore with my scholar is bringing in eco-critical sensitivity in the literature classroom for the undergraduate uh, arts students. So it's basically to do with how uh, they can be uh, made aware of uh, reducing the use of plastic. And there are lots of graphic novels, picture books, and uh, animated CGI movies, cartoon uh, clips based on that. So uh, there are lots of panels that are there in the graphic novel. So this is one such panel. And based on the panel, the students would be asked to uh, analyze and describe the character, whether the character is uh, uh, an antagonist or a protagonist. And this is from crashed by Durf, back Durf. and uh, so they have to analyze based on the images, the words, uh, panel by panel in the graphic novel, and if possible, we would give the picture book or the uh, graphic novel to the students to uh, look at it and understand, and in real life, as a multimodal activity and a real life activity, we would ask them also to uh, write about how much of plastic is being generated in their uh, locality at home and how they can reduce it and give ideas about that also. So here it's more about uh, the, uh, from the panel, it's just about the character and the illustration and expressions and gestures and how they would understand these and uh, associate it with how they can bring in eco-critical sensitivity uh, in their classroom as well as with uh, their uh, you know, uh, relatives, friends, and their locality. So that will be uh, that would be a kind of an activity for the students. So these are some of the multimodal uh, activities that I've been exploring. I've been suggesting to my uh, history scholars, and we also practically do it with our students. And uh, one small information that I wanted to show on Teams is uh, the chat. Now, this was a chat that was given before the telephonic conversation. There was another telephonic conversation on gadgets and uh, describing a product. And this is how it looks like, uh, you know, when each, uh, uh, you know, so a group has to perform and uh, has to interact. And uh, this is the kind of conversation that, that goes on between students in breakout rooms. And Teams has this option. So this is what I wanted to show. Hope my screen was visible on Teams. Yes. Thank you. These are my references. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, I wrote in the chat and I really, oh, my, my video is going crazy. I'm going to turn it off. Um, that 
it's daring teachers, you know, who dare to overcome the initial fear of trying things out. You know, once you do it, the first time you do it, you might, you know, get really, really scared. But if you keep trying to do new things, I think that it just changes a teacher's life and the students are so happy. And you are such a teacher. You're a daring teacher. And, uh, and, and that's great. That's how it has, well, as far as I'm concerned, that's how it has to be. <laughs> um, amazing, amazing activities. I yes. wanted to ask you, um, do you use Poodle in your Moodle? Do you have the um, plugin? Uh, a Poodle? Uh, is it a P-O-O-D-L, uh, Nelly? Yeah, it's double L. It's P. Oh, Justin double spoke L. about it. You can you can watch. The, you know, I encourage you to watch the uh, video, uh, the recording yeah. uh, of Justin Hunt. He was an English teacher. He was an English teacher oh. for twenty five mm -hmm. years, but he was also always a Moodle developer. So he worked alongside, and then he left teaching uh, a few few years ago, and now he's completely in it in um, with okay. Poodle. And he's developed Poodle. some amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing uh, plugins. And I, I, I really encourage you to ask your university to, um, to try them out. And you yourself, you yeah. can try them out on my Moodle, on Moodle for Teachers. If you'd like, just let me know and I'll give you everything you need to try it out. Sure, sure. I'll I'll explore that because every semester I've been exploring something new. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to bring in my ideas or uh, what I need for my scholars. So it's always an integration of so many different things that come out like a potpourri and suddenly it surprises us. Poodle I've heard about and uh, we can bring in a lot of animated characters there. That's what uh, if I've seen. I think last time you did tell about it. Could be. I've been talking about it for for a number of years. Yes. But, it, but it's it's so much more now. It's more. It's 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 perfect okay. for languages, not only English, but for other languages. Okay. Um, as well. Uh, so we can explore that in the section where we create the activities. That's what you're trying to say. Yes. Okay. I'll explore that. I'll All right. Explore and so, I'll uh, try to use it in my classroom. So thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this amazing session with uh, Anitha. And I didn't realize that we've known each other for 11 years. So um, yes, <laughs> time <laughs> does nice life. fly with Wiki Educator. Yes, that was quite a period. Anybody, anyone interested in Wiki Educator, that's an open education resource, uh, write it down and get an account. Thank you. Thank you.